usually want to start with is your your very first experience of New York, why you came to New York, where you came from, where you lived when you first came, and then where how you first intersected with the downtown art context, and then, you know, in what context you met the people who became part of this formative projects, um, collaborative oh, yeah. pro projects, and, you know, then, then some of the key moments of your, you know, what happened, what you did as a part of that group. So. Yeah. <laughs> That's a big question. But. Well, I was born in Illinois, but then we moved to California and upstate New York. And then from there I went to the Boston University. I was there in 69 and I met Roger Welch, who's an artist, and he was doing the Parish Art Museum show in Long Island, which was a conceptual earth art show. Through Roger I met Dennis Oppenheim and um, Dennis and Robert Smithson and Joan Jonas, Nancy Holtz, Richard Serra because they were all on the show. It was like a great show. And and when I was talking to Roger, he said, well, I went to the Art Institute of Chicago, and I, I decided to switch. So I transferred to um, the Art Institute. And then in 71, and then finished out there. And I met a number of people that I knew from Colab there, which would be Diego Cortez and um, Gregory Lehman, Marjorie Keller, Solovine, and Krista Maywald, who later became close friends with Dennis. When I finished at the Art Institute, then I went and showed films in Europe at the London Experimental Film Festival. And when I came back, I had applied to the Whitney Museum program. So I came back and <laughs> I, mean, I, I moved to New York from Chicago and I lived at the sort of secretly at the Whitney program downtown on Reed Street because I was new to New York and you know I had friends of mine had also moved here um, from Chicago at that point and when I was at the Whitney program I met Tom Otterness and um, Julian Schnabel and Tom Siegel and Richard Tobias who sort of became part early part of the collab when I was at the Art Institute, I had met Carolee Schneeman, who was encouraging me to come, so I came and she introduced me to a lot of people. Krista got, she was with Dennis, after we moved to New York, she lived with Dennis and she got me a job uh, editing Dennis's, Dennis Oppenheim's films. Um, so I did that. I also, one of the first non-paying jobs I had was working for Jack Smith. So. <laughs> Because Chris and I had tried to bring Jack to the artists of Chicago, but he doesn't travel alone. And when I moved to New York, I looked him up, and so I used to dust his negatives and stuff. And he lived in this place on 2nd Street, which was plastic flowers and bamboos, and he made a, a waterfall in his you know, bathroom. <laughs> we used to tour roam around the neighborhood um, that he would show me all this amazing stuff in the Lower East Side. At that time, the Lower East Side was completely burned out. I mean, just completely trashed. Every building was burned out. So I spent a lot of time with Jack. And I was working for Dennis, and I was going to the Whitney program. And this I, was 73 or 73 through, yeah, Colab didn't really start until 77, 78. So during this period, I, had, I was traveling a lot, showing my films in Europe and um, showing them here in Anthology and Millennium and Collective for Moving Cinema. And the Weber Gallery showed at an Invitational there, we showed films. And, and during this period, I was starting to meet other artists, especially you know, the artists from the Art Institute and then artists from the San Francisco Art Institute, like Jackie Oakes, Michael McClard, Betsy Sussler, eventually Robin Winters. So we were sort of, you know, all coming together. Um, Betsy got me a job working for Gordon Matta Clark. I was doing a lot of filming for him. It was underground water uh, systems of New York that he was working on. And I worked for Dennis and Les Levine and uh, Jennifer Bartlett. So I was sort of 
working for the older artists, but at the same time, you know, by showing films at Millennium and Anthology, I was starting to meet, you know, we, uh, Charlie Ahern did something in 76 or 77, it was one of the earlier ones. We'd also been part of this Weber Invitational, a bunch of us from Chicago, which I met other artists at that point that later became collab. We were in something Jack Smith was on 2nd Avenue and... and Second between B and C. And this Street. is 1973, and I worked for Jack almost a year. For free. I mean, I would just show up, and we would walk around, or I would help him organize his films, or we would just sit and talk. He gave me a book on Rot Sod, which I gave back to him. It was really an amazing book. He had, he had annotated, he had written in every page that each page was covered with Jack's notes about the Rot Sod. We did this funny Easter. Um, it was a Easter Sunday about 4 a.m. He said, oh, I've got to show you, uh, you know, this great cavern of uh, lost paintings. So we went next door to this like eight-story building, crawled in the, the basement window and climbed up by, he had a candle and climbed up, it was like being led by Virgil, climbed up the eight, you know, stories completely empty with graffiti on every floor and it was so beautiful. I mean Jack was, it was a full moon outside and Jack was going on about how great, you know, these paintings were and how they'd never been discovered <laughs> way before a graffiti artist sort of got off the ground. And Jack was really great. Of course we eventually had a falling out over the fact that I found a full-time employment <laughs> he stopped talking to me. I joined the ranks of the lobster landlords. Um, but, you know, I continued to work for uh, Dennis quite a bit and Gordon, and then I eventually got a job uh, working for a, a, a place that photographed documents for the Supreme Court and Blue Cross and all these different places. So I, would, I did that, and I made a bunch of films out of um, that material. Was Good. this idea that, that people should should not participate in the regular economy or...? Yeah, yeah. I mean, years later from that film that you mentioned, I didn't know how it was making ends meet, but it, it, you didn't, didn't need much in that place on 2nd Avenue. And years later, you know, of course I discovered that his mother was sending him checks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but the rest of us should not work for money. <laughs> Most of us didn't have the luxury of our mothers sending us checks, so... I mean, I'm sure it wasn't much, but, yeah. and he was brilliant. I mean, it was really fun to hang around him, but, um, you know, I couldn't figure out, you know, why I had to work and why he did this. And when did you start shooting the Lower East Side? Uh, oh, the film, Elias. Oh, yes. Yeah, I started, yeah, um, with this sort of travels with Jack, and then, you know, just walking to the neighborhoods to get over there and get back. And at that point, I was also going to the Whitney, and um, a good friend of mine was Tom Siegel, who later went on to be a DP on a number of big Hollywood movies. And at the time, so Siegel's a narrator, he's the, um, not the narrator, he's the journalist in the, in the film. And so we walked around, and then, uh, you know, Betsy Susser was, you know, I would walk around with different friends or walk around alone, and um, Robin <coughs> Winters. It helped a lot, um, and then from that, I sort of made. I wrote this narrative about living in the Lower East Side in the island of Manhattan, the sort of financial ruins of living there. This whole area where we're on Lundla Street was also, when we moved in, was completely burned out. Above, they were just using the ground floors for warehousing, and it was full of drugs. I mean, yes. Everybody was doing When did you here. move down here? I moved from Five Bleaker. I moved here in 1978. And were you at uh, Bleaker for, for a oh, while? Yeah. yeah, I actually after the Whitney program, after I you know left there, then I moved around a number of different places. And um, I ended up on Watt Street with Tom for a little bit and um, Hester. And then um, Tom's landlord had a storefront available for me, 
because I couldn't walk upstairs. I was I hadn't gotten sick for a while, so he gave me a storefront where I could just walk straight on. And at Five Bleakers, where we did a bunch of shows, sort of pre-collab, beginning of collab.